Hello YouTube, this is Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you today. Now having done Scottish beers for the last couple of videos, I thought it was time to go back over to the US. So today I have for you a beer from one of the breweries that are widely regarded as being one of the pioneers of the American craft brewing renaissance. It's a brewery that I really, really like. Uh, but this one is their autumn seasonal beer, or fall seasonal beer as the Americans might say. This is the Anchor Brewing Company's Big Leaf Maple. Now this is another one that I've picked up from Thistle News in Aberdeen. So I a shout out to those guys there and I'll put their link into the description for you so you can have a look at that if you're in the Aberdeenshire area in Scotland go and check out their selection of craft beer they've got a good knowledge of it and they've got quite a good selection as well but as is usual with my beer reviews I'll just take you through a little bit of a history of the brewery I've already done, done a review of the Anchor Steam Beer so you'll find the link to my other Anchor reviews in there in the video description as well and I'll do this in such a way that the other reviews that will follow in later times will also work for that link as well but as is usual I'll just take you through the bit of a history of of the brewery but if you are simply just interested in the tasting of this beer then feel free to fast forward towards the last few minutes of the video and you will catch that particular segment but anyway the roots of the Anchor Brewery trace back to the gold rush in California and in 1849 German brewer Gottlieb Breckel, who one of their ales is named after, arrived in San Francisco with his family and in 1871 he bought an old beer and billiard saloon on Pacific Street near Russian Hill for $3,500 and he transformed this uh, property into a brewery. Now 25 years later in 1896 another German brewer, Ensch Barrett, and his son-in-law Otto Schinkel bought this brewery on Pacific Road and named it Anchor and this is why the bottles bear the year 1896. Now no one's quite sure why the name Anchor was chosen but it's suspected that this was to do with the fact that San Francisco was a rather big booming port at this by this point. Now in 1906 turned out to be a very bad year for the Anchor Brewery. Ernst Barrett died suddenly in the February and two months later the Anchor Brewery was consumed by a fire resulting from the great earthquake of that year. And in January 1907 just when the brewery was opening in their new location to the south of Market Street Otto Schinkel was actually run over by a streetcar. Fortunately though the German brewers Josef Krauss and Algus Meyer kept the brewery going along with the liquor store owner, owner Henry Tietjen. And the Anchor was a brewery was effectively shut down in 1920 with the introduction of prohibition and there's little or no record of the Anchor brewery actually having done anything either Ill illegal or illegal during this period although the website admits that there may well have been some activities during this period. But prohibition failed drastically and the ban was lifted in 1933 and uh, Josef Krauss once again began brewing the Anchor Steam Beer after a hiatus of 13 years. Now the brewery then had another stroke of bad luck in February 1933 when it caught fire once again. But Josef Krauss reopened the brewery in an old brick building with a new partner Joe Allen at a location just a few streets away from the brewery's current location today. Now Krauss and Joe Allen managed to keep the Anchor Brewery afo afloat until Krauss's death in 1952 but by late 1959 the American wide demand for the mass produced light laggers had resulted in massive declines in sales for craft breweries and at the age of 71 Joe Allen shut down Anchor for what would thankfully only just be a very short period. But in 1960 the brewery was bought by Lawrence Strasse and it reopened in 1960 in a new location nearby and Joe Allen stayed with the brewery at this point but he and Strasse found it very very difficult to convince local bars to sell the Anchor Steam Beer and by 1965 Strasse was ready to shut down the brewery once again but thankfully in 1965 a Stanford graduate by the name of Fritz Maytag learned that the, in the, when he was in the old spaghetti restaurant in North Beach that the Anchor Brewery was preparing to shut its doors for good and he he rushed out to buy a 51% share in the brewery and he bought this for only a few thousand dollars and this saved the brewery from imminent bankruptcy. But by 1971, a hundred years after Gottlieb Breckel had founded the brewery that became Anchor, Fritz began to bottle the Anchor Steam beer for the first time and by 1975 the brewery had produced four other distinctive beers. This was the Anchor Porter, the Liberty Ale, the Old Foghorn Barley Wine Ale and their first annual Christmas Ale, all of which you can still get to this day although the Christmas Ales, they have a new one of these every year. But by 1977 the brewery had five different products and a dozen employees and had nearly outgrown its brewery on 8th Street in the city. Now after a long search Fritz Maytag purchased an old coffee roastery which had been built in 1937 and in August 1979 Anchor produced their first steam beer at this new facility in Mariposa Street Brewery which is, uh, remains their location to this day. 
1984 they celebrated their fifth anniversary in the Mariposa Street Brewery and they uh, celebrated this by producing a special wheat beer, the first wheat beer that had been produced in the US since Prohibition and it's now known as the Anchor Summer Beer. 1989 saw the Sumerian Beer Project which produced a beer called Ninkasi which apparently is made from a 4,000 year old recipe and after the Lomia Prieta earthquake, Anchor's Earthquake Beer was born. Now in the 90s the brewery began their artisan distilling operations and they produced their old Potero Rye Whiskey in 1993 and then in 1997 they began to make their unique pot distill at uh, Jingjunipero which sounds quite an interesting one. I've read about that. You should go and have a little look on the brewery website which is in the description there for you. Have a little read about that. Quite an interesting part of the brewery I have to say. But in 2010 after 45 years Fritz Maytag announced his retirement and the sale of the brewery to Keith Greger and Tony Folio who agreed to preserve and expand the brewery's iconic operations. But just to list the other, that's a history of the Anchor brewery for you but just to list their other beers for you there's the Anchor Small, there's the Liberty Ale which is an IPA, the Anchor Porter, the Old Foghorn, the Breckles Brown which is a beautiful beer, that's what, probably one of my favourite ones actually from the Anchor Brewery, they have the California Lager, I have a bottle of that to review for you at a later date, they have the Humming Ale, the Bock Beer, the Big Leaf Maple, this one here and the Our Barrel Ale and they also have their annual Christmas Ales which I mentioned during the history part of the video there but this one uh, to get onto the actual tasting of this beer. I'll just let you have a little look at the bottle and cap on this one. I'll bring it up, the camera up, to make sure you're seeing that. As you can see, it has the nice big Californian maple leaf on there. You can see the little anchor symbols down here. It has all of the anchor beers have a little sort of a product description on the top here, so I'll just read that out for you for this one. It says, Our fall seasonal big leaf maple autumn red was inspired by a native Californian tree. The incredible leaves, uh, its delicious syrup, and the colours of fall, big leaf maple thrives through the banks of California. California's mountain streams. Native Californians once made rope and baskets from its bark. Today, artisans handcraft its wood and burl into its custom and burl and burl into custom guitars. In autumn, its huge leaves, up to a foot across, can display a full range of colour as they slowly turn from green to gold to red. Big leaf maple sugaring in California dates to the 1800s, yet this tree's unusually flavourful syrup remains the product of small, a small group of hobbyists. A hint of maple included in big leaf maple syrup in every brew perfectly complements the malty complexity, balanced hoppiness and rich fall hue of big leaf maple autumn red, a red ale like no other. I was struggling to read that there because of the curvature on the bottle actually. But just to let you see, those of you who are interested in the bottle cap there. This is a standard uh, anchor bottle cap. All of them for actually they're different beers. They all have different coloured bottle caps. Some of them use the same ones of course but each of them tend to have a different bottle cap. But as I mentioned this is a 6% red ale. It's the autumn seasonal. It's available from August to October. It's dry hopped with Nelson Sauvine, Citra and Cascade hops and it's malted with two different caramel malts, pale malts and it has the maple syrup in it obviously. But let's get this guy open and get on with the tasting. And as I say it's, it's as I said there, as it uh, says on the product description there, the name is inspired by the Californian maple leaves. So here we go. A little bit of steam coming off that as we open it up, but let's get this guy out and into the glass. The Anchor beers actually have become quite a bit more widely available in Scotland over the last little while. I'm quite glad because as I say, it's a really, really nice brewery and they're regarded as one of the pioneers of the American craft brewing renaissance. Anyway, that's this guy out for you. As you can see, it's a really, really nice sort of reddish amber colour. If I hold that up to the light, it's a really, really sort of rich, reddy amber colour. Not quite coppery, I would say. But a bit too light for chestnut. I would just describe it as a really sort of rich red amber colour. There's some nice little carbonation coming up from the bottom there. A lot of small bubbles. It's maybe just a little bit hazy. I can see through it, but there is a little bit of haze to it. As you can see on the glass, that's about two two fingers worth of head there. In terms of the aroma, this is a this has got a really really nice nose on it. I have to say, really really nice smelling beer. But yeah, the the aroma you're getting off this one, it's really quite rich actually. You're getting a lot of fruit from the hops and there's a lot of uh, caramel and uh, syrupy brown sugars in there as you would expect. But there's some nice there's some nice bready aromas and a nice little woody element to it as well. And you've got maybe a bit of a sort of floral character to the hops as well. It's a really, really nice smell this beer. As I say, I'd heard very, very good things about this beer so I'm quite looking forward to tasting it. The head is really nice and frothy. It's starting to die down a little bit but 
this is a really rich spear. I would recommend that when you're actually tasting this for yourself, just take a little while to take in the aromas of this one. But let's give this guy a taste and see what it's like. Mm, that's something like that's really nice. Yeah, it's really malty to start. You're getting the sort of syrupy and bready flavours in there first, I would say. The caramel is a bit more subdued actually within that first bit. You're getting the syrupy and bread coming in and the caramel is just a bit more subdued into the background of this. This one's got quite a bit of hoppy character to it, as you'll notice as soon as you've had your first taste of this. But yeah, it comes in with a sort of syrupy, bready flavour, so it comes in quite malty. And then the hoppy, it dies down in the middle a little bit and the hoppy character comes out uh, just towards the end of the beer. This actually balances it out really nicely, but it's, the bitterness from the hops just stays at the end. You're getting the sort of, you're getting a kind of mix of a sort of citrusy and grapefruit flavours in there. The citrus, it's, it's sort of a, it's quite a well balanced fruity flavour actually. I'm not quite sure whether it favours the grapefruit or the citrus actually. But it does have that really, really nice sort of fruity finish to it. I'd be tempted to more describe it as a, a, maybe it's a bit more, the citrus is a bit more powerful when you're getting the sort of grapefruit in there, mixing it a little bit, but it's a really, really nice sort of fruity flavour you're getting at the end, really nicely balanced. There is a really good balance in this beer between the sort of malty opening and the, the fruity hoppy finish to it. This is a really, really good beer. Yeah really really nice as I say the sort of syrupy and bready flavours coming in there first the caramel just a little bit more subdued in the background then you've got quite a bit of hoppiness that comes in as I say the flavour comes in dies down a little bit and then it builds up with a sort of hoppy bitter finish there it's really really nice nice little mix between the citrus and the grapefruits there but you would expect a really really good beer from uh, from the Anchor Brewery this is a really really good beer yeah I can see the recommendation from Lewis and Thistle News was really, really good with this one. Great, great beer, I have to say. In terms of the mouthfeel, I would describe this one as mid-bodied. The carbonation kind of makes it quite crisp. It comes in quite sharp and then it kind of smooths out just a little bit. Yeah, the carbonation's coming in quite sharp and then it's sort of smoothing out a bit but it's quite a crisp beer it's got a nice bit of dryness and bitter character as I say from the hops throughout the beer there maybe to be honest is just a little bit of an earthy character to this one that goes with the woody flavours as well those are sort of mixed in with the kind of hoppy flavours at the end it's, as I say it's a really nice sort of complex flavour to this one and it's got a really nice mouthfeel I mean I highly re recommend that you try this beer it's fairly sessionable the mouthfeel is such that you could session a few of these but I would recommend it. to me this would be a sipping beer just because the flavour is so complex maybe that's just me when a beer has a lot of flavour like this I just like to sit, uh, sit and sip it and enjoy the flavour but as I say this is a really really beautiful beer and I hope this beer review has been informative for you I've really enjoyed doing this one and I'll, there will be more uh, Anchor Beer, Anchor Brewing Company re reviews for you to follow I'm stuttering a little bit there but I hope you've enjoyed this one as I say I hope it's been informative for you and you've enjoyed it if you haven't already please consider subscribing and let me know in the comment section your own thoughts on this beer as well. It's always interesting to hear other people's opinions of the beer. I quite like reading through the comments, to be honest. But uh, thanks again for watching my beer reviews. Please like, subscribe, share. Uh, tomorrow will be my, my 100th video review for you today. I filmed that a few days ago, so that one will be coming up. But after that, I have an Icelandic beer, uh, another my first collaboration beer, and another one from Australia. So please tune in for those. But thanks again for watching my beer reviews. As I say, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll catch you soon. You've been watching God. Radio Moscow. Cheers.